Hi, welcome once more to my living room from one of the week. So here I have most of the sprockets I own. A whole ton of counter shaft sprockets. 13, a 14, 15, 16. Rear sprocket I have a 39, the OEM 42, and then this 47 I plan on putting on. About gear ratios. I have a higher gear ratio. We'll help you get up hills. If you're one of those people who's had, who has trouble getting your bike up a hill, if you ever get stuck and keep stalling your bike, you don't have a high enough gear ratio. If you have too big of a front sprocket, then small rear one. People recommend for just 250 KLX is just changing out the 14 teeth sprocket down to the 13 and that usually gets you over most terrain. Of course here in Colorado we get some steep hills so I had to run uh, 1345 also partially because I was new until I went up to a 350 and then I found that a 1342 would adequately meet my needs. Though I do know that there are quite a few steeper hills that are really tough for up to get up. The highest that I think that would be reasonable to run with this bike would be a 1347. These all can be mathematically simplified down to just one term, which is the rear sprocket divided by the front sprocket, uh, 1442, which is the equivalent of a reduction ratio of three. So for every time the front sprocket turns three times, the rear one turns once. 1342 makes it go to a 3.2, which is adequate to meet most people's needs. The way that it makes you did not stall, you remember those power curves where it just goes. So engine RPM on the bottom, and it'll do torque or horsepower over time. As the RPM increases, the horsepower increases, the torque increases. All that the higher gear ratio does is it makes the engine provide more power because at 5 miles per hour or whatever, you would be producing 18 horsepower instead of 12. The unfortunate thing about changing out the sprockets to higher ones is that you have issues with driving. Just because it's this year, a 13.5 gear ratio or a much ratio of 3.45 at 9,000 RPM, that's when you're hitting 60. Five miles per hour. That's really uncomfortable just to have been sitting on the highway at very, very high RPM, yeah, especially on a bike that vibrates this much for a long period. So, optimally, when you're riding on the highway, you want to make your gear ratio as low as possible. I've been running for the most part a 1542 ratio for a very long time. And the funny thing is that some riders, once they have a 350 engine on here, say that a 1542 is enough to do pretty much any off road in their area. And it certainly will do more flat stuff, nothing with any too steep grades. If someone were to switch over to a supermoto wheel, then it does technically increase the gear ratio, the overall drive ratio, to like a 3.2. So since you can't go more than 15, then you might want to increase it more, go down to a 39 rear. There is a website, Gearing Commander, I'll put the link in my description, for calculating out gear ratios, and it'll tell you at what RPM you'll be at what speed. The basic rule of thumb that people go by is for every tooth you drop on the front sprocket, it's the equivalent of adding 3 to the rear sprocket. So, if I were to go from a 14 to a 13, it's the same as going from a 42 to a 45. Now, I will say that you want to use as big of a front sprocket as possible. It's the most important to you towards your chain life. So you can see on this 13 tooth sprocket versus this one, just even the 15 is so much smaller, the chain has to move much more. It has to articulate more around its, its rivets. You will have a bit of increased chain life for every tooth that you increase on your front sprocket. Whereas the rear sprocket is so large that it doesn't have to move that much anyways. If you have a choice, try to run a larger front sprocket and a larger rear sprocket. Yeah, the other thing about using a small sprocket is it makes the chain articulate more. It uses a lot more leverage on each tooth. Here on this, you can see that on the side it would face forward on the engine. It has a lot more wear. It almost seems like the teeth were shifted back this way. I know that uh, after a 45, you won't be able to use the heel guard the uh, chain cover. We can't put this thing on. Although most people don't like to look at it and it doesn't really do anything. But all this thing really serves to do is prevent grease from really getting thrown around. And the unfortunate thing is they don't make an aftermarket one for that at all. <laughs> Zeta makes a really neat one, but it only fits on the international models which have a different placement of bolts. So most people just take it off, they'll just put a couple of bolts back there just leave it alone. Because it isn't a necessary component, it's not really protecting anything, just preventing grease from getting thrown around. There isn't really much complexity up until I'd say about at least 45 teeth tooth sprockets. I think it's because there isn't a lot of material between where the teeth is and where it mounts to the hub. There's not a lot of space for any engineering tricks or anything really novel. But once you get to about 45, then you start getting very unique ones like the super sprocks. This, this gold part is made of aluminum and it's riveted to a steel outer ring. Since aluminum is softer than steel, when it rubs against the steel chain, it will invariably just grind down the gear. But when you have the same metal on the same metal, it grinds down slower. It takes longer to wear out. Yeah, so the larger rear sprockets, they have things like this. And I like this one the best just mainly because of the color. But also, I do prefer solid objects rather than the uh, open ones. Other companies will have ones with very minimalist design where it only uses the minimum 
amount of steel. I can't say anything about whether or not these are better than the other ones because I've only ever used this type of very solid sprocket. But these are mostly designed for people who are doing motocross or really intense off-road. The smallest that they'll make is usually like a 47 sprocket. Funny thing that I've noticed is that this is actually lighter than this. For those of you who really care about weight, 21 ounces, and this weighs 23 ounces. But for comparison, uh, this 39 tooth sprocket, which is only three less, this weighs 19. So this has a three ounce difference, whereas that, even though it's increasing by five teeth, only increases by about one ounce. So aluminum does make a bit of a difference. And also, you do save gas mileage. The heavier your tires are, the more effort the engine has to expend spinning them around. Aftermarket sprocket covers, there are two companies that make them. The other one is Beat, but it's hard to get in the US. Even this one's hard to get in the US. The Zeta one. The Beat one is more closed off, it covers a lot more area. It's probably safer. I just comparing this to this, it does cover much less area. So I guess there is a potential for more. But I'm sure it'll work, and I trust metal more than I do trust plastic, because this I know has cracked on me. And Thank you.